Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number two of the course on statistics and probability. In the last lecture, I conveyed to you the organization and structure of this course. In addition, I discussed with you the nature of the discipline of statistics, the importance of statistics in different fields, and also I picked up some technical concepts such as data, variables, measurement scales, and errors of measurement. Today, we will be discussing the various steps involved in a statistical inquiry. And in particular, we will be discussing the methods of data collection, both primary data and secondary data. And also, we will discuss at some length the concept of sampling. Students, koi bhi research jo hum real life data we based karna chahte hain, usme kaun kaun si steps involved hote hain. Actually, it's quite a scientific method and you have to have a methodological approach toward this problem. So, agar main isko list karne ki koshish karu, to hum yun keh sakte hain, ke for any statistical inquiry, first of all, you would be very clear about the topic and the significance of the study. You should be absolutely clear about the objective of your study, exactly what it is that you are trying to find out. And then, of course, the methodology for data collection, the source of your data, and also the sampling methodology as well the instrument for collecting your data, the tool by which you would collect your data is of the utmost importance. Then, of course, once you have collected the data, you would proceed to the analysis of this data. You will draw results and conclusions and finally, recommendations based on your study. As far as the methodology for data collection is concerned, I just said to you that there are three things that you should be clear about. First of all, source of your data, that is the statistical population where you will collect data. And then the sampling methodology, because most of you don't have resources कि आप पूरी पॉपुलेशन से डेटा कलेक्ट कर सकें एंड यू हैव टू रिसोर्ट टू सैंपलिंग और उसके बाद आल्सो इक्वली इंपॉर्टेंट साथ ही साथ द इंस्ट्रूमेंट द मेथड बाय व्हिच यू वुड कलेक्ट योर डेटा सो आई विल बिगिन द डिस्कशन फ्रॉम द थर्ड पॉइंट एंड दैट इज द इंस्ट्रूमेंट एंड देन आई विल गो टू द फर्स्ट टू पॉइंट्स द पॉपुलेशन एंड द प्रोसीजर फॉर सैंपलिंग स्टूडेंट्स किसी भी स्टेटिस्टिकल इंक्वायरी में ये जो कलेक्शन ऑफ डेटा है दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट स्टेप्स यू सी द पॉइंट इज कि सारा जो आपका एनालिसिस है जो बाद में आपने बड़ी बड़ी सोफिस्टिकेटेड मेथड्स भी आप उसके ऊपर अप्लाई कर लें अगर आपका डेटा ही सही नहीं है तो हाउ कैन यू एक्सपेक्ट योर रिजल्ट टू बी रिलायबल एंड वैलिड so, is zimn me, the first thing to understand is that we, we can differentiate between two types of data that we could collect, the primary data and the secondary data. Data that have been originally collected and have not undergone any sort of statistical treatment are called primary data. यानी दूसरे लफ्जों में वो डेटा जो आप खुद कलेक्ट करेंगे फ्रेश फ्रेश डेटा दैट इज प्राइमरी डेटा ऑन द अदर हैंड 
data that have undergone some sort of statistical treatment by statistical methods at least once. That is, data that have been collected, classified, tabulated, and presented in some form for a certain purpose are called secondary data. As far as collection of primary data is concerned, students, there are a number of ways of doing that. We have direct personal investigation, indirect investigation, collection through questionnaires, collection through enumerators, and also there is a method in which we have data collected through local sources. Sabse pehle, direct personal investigation ki baat karte hain. Students, ye wo method hai ki jis mein researcher ya investigator jo hai, wo data ko khud personally collect karta hai. Kisi aur pe rely nahi karta. Aur chunke uska apna zati interest us research problem mein itna zyada hota hai, is liye is tara se jo data collect kiya jata hai, that is generally quite accurate. But of course, as you can understand, this method, you know, in which the interviewer is, uh, I mean, the researcher is uh, doing it himself, you know, this method can prove quite costly and time consuming, when, especially when the area to be covered is vast. However, it is quite a useful method for lab experiments or for localized inquiries. Lekin is mein ek uh, problem aur bhi hai ke although the researcher may be wanting and thinking that he is uh, being very impartial and objective, you know, sometimes it is possible ke uska jo personal ek personal inclination hai, personal ek jo bent of mind hai, personal way of thinking jo hai, jise hum log personal bias kahenge, you know, actually that might actually enter into the data and so the data that way may not be extremely accurate. Uh, the next method that I would like to discuss is the method of indirect investigation. Dekhye, baaz oqaat aisa hota hai ki aap uh, information jin logon ke baare mein hasil karna chahate hain, you know, they are hesitant to uh, provide that information to you. For example, aap sab jante hi hain ki income, log apni income ek dam se aapke saath share nahi karna chahate. Ya khawateen ke baare mein aam baat hai ki ji khawateen apni umar aapko nahi batana chahate. So this is just a small example to illustrate the point that sometimes actually it is it may not be possible for you to obtain the accurate information directly from the person's concerned. In such situation, mein, uh, you would be interview, interviewing uh, some third party who has knowledge about that particular, you know, about that about those people and about that phenomenon. And you will be collecting data from from these third parties in an indirect way. Isse kehte hain indirect data collection. Lekin isme bhi we have to be very careful because sometimes it is possible that the third party may give you wrong information about this person deliberately. The next method is the questionnaire method. Is ke andar hum ek sawal nama tayar karte hain aur usko hum administer karte hain apne respondents ke upar and they are requ uh, required to answer all the questions and to fill out the performer. Um, Western countries mein jahan pe aur un sab countries mein jahan pe level of literacy or education uh, hamare developing countries ke nisbat bahut zyada hota hai. Sabse zyada aam tariqa ye hai ke by mail, you know, they would send the questionnaire by mail aur ab to aapko pata hai ke email aur in sab cheezo ka zamana hai. Lekin developing countries mein as you know, there's when there are so many people who are not able to read and write, generally 
um, you would have a trained enumerator who would go to this respondent and he would interview the person or jo unka jawabat unke jo honge ye hamara jo enumerator hai wo form ko bharega according to the answers given by the respondent so in this manner the next method that i listed the method of trained enumerators wo link up ho jata hai questionnaire method ke sath kyunki jab trained enumerator bhi jata hai to uh, wo ek sawal nama uske paas hota hai jise wo administer karta hai on the respondent uh, in sub methods ke ilawa ek aur method jiska maine zikr kiya that is the method in which we uh, have the data collected locally from local sources iska aasan example uh, crop estimation ka hai jab aapko crop ki crop ke bare mein andaza karna hota hai to aap uh, jo local sources hain jo gaon ka nambardar hai jo wahan ke local uh, concerned log hain unse aap information mangwa lete hain ये तो हुई बात प्राइमरी डेटा की वो डेटा जो आप खुद कलेक्ट करेंगे या करवाएंगे द अदर काइंड ऑफ डेटा इज सेकेंडरी डेटा एंड एज आई मैंशन एलियर दिस इज दैट डेटा विच हैज ऑलरेडी बीन कलेक्टेड बाय सम ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इसके अंदर हमारे पास हम इसे कैटेगराइज कर देते हैं मुख्तलिफ कैटेगरीज में वी हैव ऑफिशियल सोर्सेज सेमी ऑफिशियल सोर्सेज publications of uh, trade associations and chambers of commerce and such organizations and we also have um, research organizations official sources ki category mein governmental departments such as the statistics division the provincial and federal bureaus of statistics or uh, semi official mein semi government idare for example the railway board or the central cotton committee is kasam ke idare uske andar shamil hote hain students ye to hui methods of data collection ki baat aaiye ab hum us baat pe jaate hain jo maine pehle shuru mein kahi thi the source of our data yani data collect kahan se karenge the population the statistical population and then also the method of sampling iske andar sabse pehle dekhne ki cheez ye hai ki why do we have to resort to sampling jaisa ki maine pehle kaha of course if we could conduct a complete census a complete count that would be a perfect situation an ideal situation isliye ki aap apni tamam tar population ko exhaust kar rahe hain और एक एक एलिमेंट ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन से डेटा कलेक्ट कर रहे हैं बट द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट दिस परफेक्ट एंड आइडियल सिचुएशन इज नॉट अवेलेबल इन रियल लाइफ वेरी रेयरली इज इट पॉसिबल टू यू टू हैव एक्सेस टू द एंटायर पॉपुलेशन मोर ऑफन देन नॉट द स्टडी हैज टू बी कंडक्टेड ऑन सैंपल बेसिस यू समझ लीजिए कि ये जो सब्जेक्ट है स्टेटिस्टिक्स का इसका गोल ही ये है द गोल ऑफ द साइंस ऑफ स्टेटिस्टिक्स इज टू ड्रॉ कंक्लूजन अबाउट लार्ज पॉपुलेशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ डेटा कलेक्टेड ऑन सैंपल बेसिस आइए अब हम ये जो लव्स पॉपुलेशन है इसको फॉर्मली डिफाइन करते हैं एज यू कैन सी ऑन द स्क्रीन a population is the collection of every member of a group possessing the same basic and defined characteristic but varying in amount or quality from one member to another we have two types of population the finite population and the infinite population let me explain this point with the help of some examples for a finite population you could think of the iqs of all the children in a school the heights of those children their weights their 
blood pressures, their body temperatures. کہنے کا مقصد یہ ہے کہ چونکہ اس سکول کے اندر ان بچوں کی تعداد ایک فائنائٹ تعداد ہے لہٰذا آپ ان سے ریلیٹڈ کسی بھی ویریبل پہ اگر ڈیٹا کلیکٹ کریں گے تو دیٹ ول کانسٹیٹیوٹ اے فائنائٹ پاپولیشن دی ادر آف کورس از دی انفینٹ پاپولیشن فار ایگزامپل دی بیرومیٹرک پریشر there are an infinitely large number of points on the surface of the earth and hence we can have an infinite number of readings of barometric pressure is zaman mein samajhne ki baat ye hai ki bahut si populations um itni zyada large hoti hain ki even if they are اگر ہم ریگورس بہت ہی زیادہ ریگورسلی ڈیفائن کریں تو ہم کہہ سکیں کہ اٹس اے فائنائٹ پاپولیشن لیکن چونکہ وہ اس قدر لارج ہے اس لیے فار آل پریکٹیکل پرپزز اٹ از اکویولنٹ ٹو این انفینٹ پاپولیشن اسٹوڈینٹس یہ جو دونوں ایگزامپلس میں نے ابھی آپ کے سامنے پیش کی دے ور آف واٹ کین بی کالڈ ایگزسٹنٹ پاپولیشنس یعنی وہ چیزیں جو ایکچولی ایگزسٹ کر رہی ہیں But then we could also talk about the hypothetical population, the population of all conceivable ways in which a certain event can happen. For example, all possible outcomes from the throw of a die. However long we throw the die and record the results, we could always continue to do so for a still longer period. students there is one other differentiation that we need to make and that is between the sampled population and the target population sampled population is that from which the sample is chosen whereas target population is that about which the information is sought for example suppose that we desire to know the opinions of the college students in the punjab regarding the present examination system our population will in that case consist of the total number of students in all the colleges of the punjab but if suppose that on account of shortage of resources or time we are unable to conduct a survey of this kind on all the colleges and we select only five colleges scattered throughout the province then our target population consists of all the colleges whereas the sampled population consists of those five colleges that we have chosen students population ke bare mein to humne khasi baat kar li the next question is how do we draw a sample from our population is zaman mein the very first thing to note is that we have two methods of sampling basically the non random sampling and random sampling statistics ki jo tamam tar jo theory hai statistical inference ki jo theory hai that is based on the assumption that our sample is a random sample in order to draw a random sample from a population students the first thing we need is the complete list of our population which is technically called the frame for example the complete list of all the bcs students of the virtual university of pakistan as on 15th of february 2003 students as far as the sampling frame is concerned it should be kept in mind that as far as possible our frame should be free from various types of defects that can occur it should not contain inaccurate elements it should not be incomplete it should be free from duplication and it should not be out of date ye jo maine abhi aapko example di ke 15 february 2003 ko 
वर्चुअल यूनिवर्सिटी के तमाम तर स्टूडेंट्स की जो लिस्ट है तो अभी जो मैंने जिन डिफेक्ट्स का जिक्र किया उस हवाले से यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ द लिस्ट कंटेन्स सम स्टूडेंट हु हैड प्रीवियसली एनरोल्ड बट हैज नाउ लेफ्ट और इफ द लिस्ट कंटेन्स द नेम ऑफ द सेम स्टूडेंट ट्वाइस देन दीज आर द काइंड ऑफ एरर्स दैट वी मस्ट ट्राई टू अवॉइड एंड एज फार एज पॉसिबल the frame should be complete accurate and up to date aaiye ab actual sampling ki baat karte hain is frame mein se hame ab ek sample draw karna hai is silsile mein the first thing to keep in mind is that a sample is only a part of this population and therefore it can only represent the population to a certain extent it cannot represent it fully and the goal of sampling is that the sample should be drawn in such a way that it it is a good representative of the population in spite of the fact that it is usually much smaller than the population students sampling has so many advantages from the practical point of view you are able to save a lot of time and money simply because the bulk of work is so much smaller than a complete census you are you are able to collect more detailed information about a number of variables you have the possibility of follow up follow up kisko kehte hain students jab aap data collect karte hain तो ये तो कतई जरूरी नहीं है कि तमाम तर इंफॉर्मेशन आपको जो हासिल हो वो बिल्कुल एक्यूरेट हो एन मुमकिन है कि वो सवाल नामा जो आपके रिस्पोंडेंट ने आपको भर के वापस भेजा उसमें दस में से नौ क्वेश्चंस को तो उसने आंसर किया हो लेकिन दसवें क्वेश्चन को उसने आंसर ना किया हो एंड ऑल्सो यू माइट हैव द आंसर बट यू माइट इट माइट बी वेरी क्लियर टू यू दैट दे आर देर आर सम एर इन इन दम ऐसी सिचुएशन में यू वुड बी फॉलोइंग अप योर क्वेरी आप अपने रिस्पोंडेंट को दोबारा कांटेक्ट करते हैं एंड यू ट्राई टू हैव हिम रेक्टिफाई द एरर्स। ऑब्वियसली अगर एक कंप्लीट सेंसस है तो फॉलो अप की पॉसिबिलिटी बहुत कम है बिकॉज इट्स सो सच ह्यूज स्टडी एंड यू के नॉट अफोर्ड टू follow up on your uh, respondents but if it is only a sample many times it is possible for you to do so students let me now discuss with you two technical concepts the concept of sampling error and the concept of non sampling error sampling error is defined as the difference between the true value of the population such as the true population mean and the value the similar value computed from the sample for example the sample mean yani as you can now see on the screen in case of the mean sampling error will be defined as x bar minus mu where mu represents the true population mean and x bar represents the sample mean इस डिफरेंस को सैम्पलिंग एरर इसीलिए कहते हैं कि दिस अराइज ड्यू टू सैम्पलिंग बिकॉज अ सैम्पल इज ओनली अ पार्ट ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन हेंस द वैल्यू दैट यू कंप्यूट फ्रॉम द सैम्पल कैन नॉट बी द सेम एज दैट फ्रॉम दैट यू वुड हैव फ्रॉम द इंटायर पॉपुलेशन एंड दिस एरर वुड बी देयर इवन इफ योर सैम्पल हैज बीन ड्रॉन इन अ इन अ वेरी करेक्ट मैनर Besides sampling error, there are there is this other kind of error called non-sampling error. Yes, it's clear that these are those errors which are involved in your process, not because of sampling, but which would be there even if you are conducting a complete census. The defect in the sampling frame, faulty reporting of facts due to personal preferences. negligence or indifference of the enumerator 
and non-response to male questionnaires are examples of non-sampling error. Students, sampling or sample pe based study ke zimin mein ek aur point bhi uh, note karne wala hai. Aur wo ye hai ke how long should the process of data collection be continued? Obviously, koi aisi study nahi ho sakti ke jis mein aap ye data collection ka process jo hai, isko aap ek indefinite period tak prolong kar sake. In fact, the longer your uh, data collection takes, the more possibility there is of having variations in response because of the time lag. And hence, the procedure is that a, a definite cutoff date is generally established for any data-based study. Students, I have said we can have non-random sampling or random sampling. Of course, my stress in a short while will be very much on random sampling. Lekin isse peshtar, mai thoda sa aapke saath ye discuss karna chahungi ke non-random sampling se kya murad hai. Non-random sampling is that in which we would uh, select the uh, elements using our personal judgment. Is ke andar, we have different types and one of the most popular types is called quota sampling. Quota sampling is often used in commercial surveys such as consumer market research. For example, um, suppose that one particular company wants to know the opinion of, this, of the people about this new product that they have launched in the market. They may tell their enumerator, this one enumerator, that uh, he should interview 10 married women between 30 and 40 years of age living in this particular area whose husbands are professional workers and five unmarried professional women of the same age living in the same town, same area. Yani, dusre lafzo mein, ye jo enumerator hai, he is restricted by quota controls. Usko ek tadaj to de di gayi hai ke itne mard, itni khawateen. Lekin uske baad ye ke kaun se mard, kaun si khawateen? That is totally up to his own discretion. Is liye, students, you can see that in this kind of sampling, there is no need for the list of the entire population out of which you would have drawn a sample using the lottery method. As such, it is obvious that this is a very, very convenient form of sampling. Uh, there is a lot of cost reduction and also a lot of saving in terms of time. But this is not the one that we have to go for. Is ke jitna bhi wo samjhe ke jo main selection kar raha hu, that is random. It is actually not really random. Students, you will be interested to know that psychological studies have been conducted which have established that the human mind is a poor random selector. Kehne ka maqsad ye hai ke, for example, suppose ke main aap se kahun ke 1 se 20 tak aap randomly number bolte jai. So you might say 1, 3, 2, 7, 12, 19. And you think that this is totally random. Lekin ab jab isi data ko aap analyze karenge, to aap dekhenge ke aap ne bohat zyada number jo bole, they were odd numbers and there were very few even numbers. Same is the situation in, in case of um, non-random sampling. The enumerator may be thinking that he is able, he has been able to interview all kinds of men and all kinds of women in this interview regarding this particular product, but it is possible that those people are not a, really a very, very good representative of the population. Of course, there will be situations 
when it will be better to resort to non-random sampling. For example, suppose that the rector of your university wants to send one of the students of this university to some foreign country for this particular conference. Obviously, in this case, he should use his best discretion to select a student that who will be able to represent the university in a proper way. And obviously, this student will be one of the most intelligent and good students. Like in statistical point of view, say, this student will not be a proper representative of the entire population of this university. Isliye ke jo 2000-2000 ki total population hai, usme to tamam kismo ke students maujood hai. Some who are very intelligent, some who are not that intelligent. So this is the key concept as far as sampling from the statistical point of view is concerned. A sample students is supposed to be a miniature replica of the population. All right, let us now focus our attention on random sampling. Students, random sampling is the one in which you select your sample by the lottery method. This is the simplest way of saying it. Ke jis tarah lottery method mein aap selection karte hain, agar aap us tarah se sampling kare, so that can be called random sampling. In this category, we have a number of uh, types of sampling, such as the simple random sampling, the stratified random sampling, systematic sampling, cluster sampling, multi-stage sampling, and so on and so forth. Is course mein, in tamam tariqon ke baare mein discussion karne ki to gunjaish nahi hai. I will be focusing on the simplest kind of random sampling, and that is simple random sampling. S simple random sampling is the one in which the chance of any one element of the parent population to be included in the sample is the same as for any other element. Aye, ab dekhte hain ke ye jo sample hai, ye hum kis tarah se actually draw karenge. Aapko malumi hai ke jo traditional method hai lottery ka, wo to ye hai ke aap logon ke naam parchiyon ke upar likh kar, पर्चियों को फोल्ड करके एक हैट में डाल दें और उसको बहुत अच्छी तरह से हिलाकर और शफल करके यू वुड पुट पुल आउट वन ऑफ दोस जेट्स ऑफ पेपर अब तो एस यू नो वेरी वेल बेटर देन मी कंप्यूटर का जमाना है एंड कंप्यूटर्स आर एबल टू कंडक्ट द लॉटरी मेथड फॉर यू वेरी कन्वीनिएंटली बाय जेनरेटिंग रैंडम नंबर्स मैं आपके साथ इन दोनों के दरमियान का जो फेज है उसको डिस्कस करूंगी एंड दैट इज द यूज ऑफ द रैंडम नंबर टेबल अ रैंडम नंबर टेबल स्टूडेंट्स इज अ पेज फुल ऑफ द डिजिट्स फ्रॉम जीरो टू नाइन व्हिच आर प्रिंटेड ऑन दैट पेज इन अ टोटली रैंडम मैनर एक्चुअली दीज tables are constructed according to certain mathematical principles such that the chance of any one digit to appear on that page is equal to the chance of any other digit to appear. So, as you can now see on the screen, ye digits is tarah se hain ke in mein kisi kisam ka koi systematic pattern ya order nahi paaya jata. In order to uh, draw a sample from this kind of a table, I will explain this point with the help of an example. Suppose that we have the frequency distribution of the ages of a population of 1,000 college students in, a, in any particular country. The ages are, as you can see, from 13 to 19, and the number of students 
in the various age groups are 6, 61, 270 and so on. Now, this 1000 size ki jo population hai, suppose that we have to draw a sample of size 10 from this population. How do we proceed? The first step is to allot a sampling number to each item in the population. And to do that, the very first step should be to construct a column of cumulative frequencies. So, as you now see on the screen, the cumulative frequencies for this example are 6, 67, 3, 37 and so on. Now that we have all these cumulative frequencies, now we are in a position to allocate the sampling numbers to all these uh, population units. As the cumulative frequency of the first class is 6 students, what we can do and should do in this case is to allocate sampling numbers 000 to 005 to those 6 students who belong to this very first class. Now, the cumulative frequency of the second class is 67. Whereas the cumulative frequency of the first class was 6, this means that we can allocate sampling numbers 006 to 066 to the 61 students who belong to the second class. Similarly, the cumulative frequency of the third class is 337. The cumulative frequency of the second class was 67 and we can therefore allocate to the third class sampling numbers 0672336. Proceeding in this manner, you obtain the sampling numbers from 000 to 999 as you now see on the screen. The interpretation of this column of sampling numbers is that the first student whose age is 13, he or she has been allotted the sampling number 000. The sixth student has been allotted the number 005. The seventh student whose age is 14 has been allocated the sampling number 006 and so on such that the last student, the thousandth student whose age is 19 years has been allocated the sampling number 999. Students, I'm sure ke aapke zahen mein is waqt ek sawal a raha hoga. Aur wo ye ke why have we shifted the number backward by one? Yani jo pehla student hai, usko aapne 000 kyun diya hai? 001 kyun nahi diya hai? The reason is that in all, we have 1000 students. Agar hum exact wohi numbering karna chahe, jo ke uska actual number hai, to phir aapko three digit ki bajaye, four digit sampling numbers istamal karne padenge. The first student would have been allocated the number 0001 and the thousandth student would have been allocated the number 1000. Ab aapko tamam tar jo process iske aage hai, wo four digit numberon ke saath karna padega. And if I, I can avoid one number by one of those four digits, simply by shifting the, the sampling numbers backward by one, why, should, why shouldn't I do that? Now the next step is to actually select the sample. Sampling number to humne allocate kar diye. Now, I have to use the random number table, the one that you just saw, in order to select a sample from this population. Shayar aapko bohat yeh baat ajeeb si lage. Lekin process is ka yeh hai, ke aap, you know, you would simply close your eyes and put, put your finger somewhere on that page. Aur jahaan pe bhi woh land kare, wahaan se aap po number padhenge. A three digit number exactly where your finger has landed. Suppose that your finger lands on the number 041. This means that the first student who has to be, who is selected in your sample 
is the 42nd student. Remember, 42nd student ko aapne sampling number diya tha 041. Aapka sample ka size 10 hai aur aapka pehla element select ho gaya. What do you do after that? Dobara se aapko finger rakhne ki zhruat nahi hai. Chunke wo tamam tar table totally random digits pe mushtamil hai. Now you can simply go down aur aap usse agla number aur uske baad usse agla number aur uske baad usse agla number and in this way you get your sample. So, as you now see on the screen, suppose that in this example, the numbers that you obtain are 041, 103, 374 and so on. And accordingly, the ages of the students that have been selected are 14, 15, 16, and so on. This example may hum students ki ages ke saath deal kar rahe hain. And suppose that our first objective is to find the mean age of these students. Ab jo humne sample select kiya, un ages ki hum mean agar nikale, to that will be denoted by x bar. Or agar hum us puri population ki mean age compute kare, to that is equal to, that is denoted by mu. The population mean age comes out to be 15.785 years, whereas the sample mean age comes out to be 15.6 years. Students, ye values maine kis tarah se compute ki hain? Iski detail to hum chan lectures ke baad karenge. Is waqt aap sirf ye dekhiye ke is example mein humara jo sampling error hai, Yani jo difference hai between the sample mean and the population mean that comes out to be minus 0 0.185. Yani it is quite small. And this sampling error came out to be so small because of the fact that it was a proper random sample. Jab bhi aap random sampling karenge, the probability will be high that your sample is a miniature replica of the population. Students, as stated earlier, there are various other types of random sampling, such as stratified sampling, systematic sampling, cluster sampling, and so on. As I mentioned, we will not have the opportunity to discuss all these different designs in detail in this particular course, but I would like to present to you a brief description of the concept of stratified sampling. The first and foremost point to be noted in this regard is that the procedure of simple random sampling, the one that I just described, is appropriate in that situation when the units contained in our population are similar to each other with respect to the object of our study. In other words, simple random sampling is appropriate when our population is homogeneous. In contrast, there are numerous situations where the units of the population under study are not all similar to each other. In other words, the population is not homogeneous but may be regarded as a heterogeneous population. Stratified random sampling is a type of probability sampling which is suitable in this kind of a situation. And in this situation, the population is divided into relatively homogeneous groups technically called strata. L students, let me explain this point with the help of an example. Suppose that a study is to be conducted regarding the advertising expenditures of the 352 largest companies in a particular country. Suppose that the objective of the study is to determine whether firms with high returns on equity, that is high profitability, 
spend more on advertising than firms with a low return or a deficit. Now, since there is a considerable amount of variation between the 352 firms with respect to profitability, therefore, in this situation, we cannot say that the population is homogeneous and we would rather divide the firms into various groups in accordance with their profitability level, the grouping being done in such a way that the companies that fall within a group are relatively homogeneous. Suppose that it was decided that the 352 firms should be divided into five strata as shown in the table that you now see on the screen. Stratum 1 consisting of those companies whose return on equity is 30 percent or higher. Stratum 2 the companies having return between 20 percent and 30 percent. Stratum 3 companies having return between 10 percent and 20 percent. Stratum 4 companies having return between 0 percent and 10 percent and stratum 5 companies who have to suffer a deficit. As you can see on the slide out of the 352 firms 8 fell in the first group, 35 in the second, 189 in the third, 115 in the fourth and only 5 in the fifth and last stratum. The concept of stratified sampling is that once the population has been divided into various strata, a simple random sample should be drawn from each stratum. In this regard, the first question that arises is how large a sample should be drawn from the ith stratum? The answer to this question is that stratified sampling can be done either by the method of proportional allocation or by the method of non-proportional allocation. Now, the allocation is said to be proportional when the total sample size small n is distributed among the different strata in proportion to the number of units in those strata. In other words, the allocation is said to be proportional if small n i is equal to capital N i multiplied by small n over capital N. And students, in this formula, small n i is the ith stratum sample size, capital N i is the population size of the ith stratum small n is the overall size of the sample and capital N is the total size of the population. In this particular example, capital N1 is 8, capital N2 is 35 and so on and of course, capital N, the overall population size is 352. Therefore, applying the formula that I just presented, small n i is equal to 0 0.142 times capital N i. Applying this formula on each one of the five strata that we have in this example, we obtain small n 1 is equal to 0 0.142 times 8 and that is approximately equal to 1. Similarly, small n 2 comes out to be equal to 5, small n 3 is 27, small n 4 is 16 and small n 5 is equal to 1. This leads to the table that you now have on the screen and as you can see, this table shows that if a total of 50 firms are to be selected for intensive study, then one firm with a level of profitability of 
30% or more will be included in our sample. Five firms in the 20 to 30% stratum would be selected in our sample at random and so on. So students, this is the procedure of stratified sampling by proportional allocation. Yani, jo proportion overall sample size ka overall population size ke saath banta hai, wohi proportion har stratum ke andar maintain hota hai. Students, regardless of whether the stratified sampling has been done by proportional allocation or non-proportional allocation, the important question is, what is the advantage of this particular type of sampling? The answer to this question is that stratified sampling ensures that every group present within the heterogeneous population is represented in the sample. In the example that we just discussed, it is worth noting that only 2% of the firms fell in stratum 1 and only 1% in stratum 5. Agar hum simple random sampling karte, puri population mein se ek hi martaba simple random sample draw kar lete, to n mumkin tha ke in do strata mein se koi bhi company hamare sample mein shamil na hoti. But a stratified random sample ensures that at least one firm from stratum 1 and one from stratum 5 are represented in the sample. In other words, in such a situation, stratified sampling has the advantage of being able to reflect the characteristics of the population more accurately than simple random sampling. So, this was a brief introduction to the concept of stratified sampling. But students, in this particular course, all the techniques of inferential statistics that we will be discussing in the forthcoming lectures, they will be with reference to simple random sampling, the one that is applicable in the case of a homogeneous population. Students, this brings us to the end of today's lecture and I would like to encourage you very much to study in some detail the concept of sampling. Best of luck and Allah Hafiz.